Hi, my name is Margaret. This is part two of my introduction to interfaces. In part one, we discussed what interfaces are and why we use them. Now we are going to look at three ways to use interfaces in our code. We can declare interfaces, implement existing interfaces, and we can use interfaces as types. Let's start by having a closer look on how to declare interfaces. Java interfaces are reference types, but they are different from classes. One of the main differences is that they have no constructor and they cannot be instantiated. That is something that they have in common with abstract classes. Indeed, interfaces are implicitly abstract but we don't use the abstract keyword. Let's look at interface members. Since the early days of Java, interfaces could include constants, abstract methods and nested types. Later, the number of possible interface members expanded. Now, we can not only include abstract methods, but also default methods, static methods and even private methods. In interface declarations, constants are implicitly public, static, and final, and methods are assumed to be public and abstract unless specified otherwise, so there is no need to include these keywords in the declarations. Let's have a look at the syntax. An interface declaration looks similar to a class declaration, but we use the keyword interface instead of the keyword class and inside the interface body, we declare the interface methods. The name of interfaces are Pascal cased. Interface names are often adjectives like comparable, auto-closable, serializable, or nouns like list and set. Here is an example, interface movable. It has one public abstract method, move. Notice, we do not include the keywords public or abstract. They are implied. Let's look at another example, the interface Raptor. It has two interface members, a public abstract method catch and a public default method eat. Notice the keyword default in the implementation of the method eat. If the class that implements the interface raptor does not override the method eat, then this e default implementation is used. Sometimes we need an interface that includes all the members of an existing interface and more. We can do that by extending an existing interface. In our example, Interface 2 includes all members of Interface 1 plus the additional interface members that are declared in the interface body. Notice the keyword extends. This is the same keyword that we use for class inheritance. In this context, it defines and is a relationship between two interfaces where Interface 2 is a Interface 1. Here is an example from the Java API. Interface list extends the interface collection. Because interface list includes all the members of interface collection, all the collection requirements are met and interface list is a collection. Consequently, lists can be used whenever collection is required in addition to situations when a list is required. An interface can also extend multiple interfaces. We use a comma to separate the interface names. In this example, interface C includes all the members of interface A and all the members of interface B. That means interface C has an is a relationship to both interface A and interface B. Now 
that we had a closer look at declaring interfaces, let's find out how to implement existing interfaces. When a class implements an interface, it establishes an is-a relationship. In this case, it is an is-a relationship between a class and an interface. Notice the dashed error shaft in the UML class diagram. It indicates the implementation of an interface. The shaft starts at the class and the arrowhead has a shape of a hollow triangle and points to the interface. In this example, the UML class diagram describes that my list is a list. Let's look at another example. This time, we'll start with a simple class called disk. It has one field, the radius, a constructor, and a getter. Let's assume we have an array of five disks as shown in this image, and a task to sort the array. The Java class library provides a method that sorts array. It is the method sort from class arrays. It requires, as an argument, an array of objects, which seems fine since disk is an object. However, when we open the detailed description of the method, we see that all elements in the array must implement the comparable interface. Since we want to use the existing method sort, we are going to implement the interface comparable for class disk. However, before we can do that, we need to know more about the interface comparable. We need to know which interface members are declared and whether there are special requirements specified. I'll show you how to find out. Let's take a moment to look up the interface comparable in the Java API. Here it is. Notice the pointed brackets with the T. We need that because comparable is a generic interface. The T stands for the type that we are going to compare. In our case, that is going to be a disk. Now I'm going to scroll down to look at the interface members. I can see there is exactly one interface member. It is one method, compare to, and it compares this object with the specified objects for order. Now notice there is one parameter of type T, for our case of type disk, and then it returns a number that indicates was this disk smaller, bigger, or equal to the disk that was provided. Now, the question might come up, which number are we supposed to return anyhow? Uh, we can find out uh, by clicking on the name. When I click on the name here, it opens up the detailed view. And here it tells me that compare to returns a negative integer, zero, or a positive integer as this object is less than, equal, or greater than the specified object. This was all the information we needed for now. Here is the updated version of class disk. Right up front in the interface header, we use the keyword implements followed by the interface name. In our case, the interface name is comparable and then we add the type disk in pointed brackets because it is a generic interface. In addition, we also need to provide an implementation for the interface method compare to. We are lucky because there is a method compare from class double that provides exactly the functionality we need. Because of that, we can just call the method compare and return the result. Notice the annotation override. When we implement the interface method, we override the abstract method that was declared in the interface. It is a good practice to use the at override annotation because it allows the compiler to catch mistakes in the method signature and it makes the code more clear. The corresponding UML class diagram looks like this. We could also add details about the class and interface members but for our purpose, that is not needed. The dashed error shaft indicates that class disk implements the interface comparable. Disk is a class that is comparable.
To sum it up, when we implement an interface, we use the keyword implements followed by the interface name and we override all abstract methods. One class can implement multiple interfaces. We could have, for example, a bike that implements movable and comparable. The interface names are separated by commas. Classes can derive from a superclass and implement interfaces. However, classes can have only one direct superclass, but they can implement multiple interfaces. Here is one more thing I would like to point out. In Java, objects can have multiple types. Let's look at the object my conifer. It is declared as a conifer. Because conifer is a tree, and a tree is an object and also a class that is growable, conifer is a tree, it is an object, and it is a growable. We can assign my conifer to variables of type tree, object, and growable. Even more, we can use my conifer whenever an object of type tree or object or growable is required. At this point, we have discussed how to declare an interface and how to implement one. Let's have a closer look on how to use interfaces as types. We cannot instantiate an interface, but we can declare a variable of an interface type, for example, movable, my movable. If we try to assign it an instance of an interface, we'll get a compile time error. Interfaces cannot be instantiated. However, we can assign it an instance of a duck, provided class duck implements the interface movable. Or we could create a variable list of the interface type list and assign it a new array list. In such situations, we often talk about programming to an interface. We create an instance of a class and assign it to a variable of an interface type. Throughout the code, we use the interface type, not the type of the class. For example, if we pass the list to a method, we use the parameter type list, not array list. We no longer say we need a specific class. Instead, we say we can work with any class as long as it can do or access certain things. Why should we program to an interface? It makes the code more flexible, less pretty, easier to maintain. Let's say we have a variable list that was assigned an array list. However, someone wrote a new list implementation that can perform certain list operations exceptionally fast and we want to benefit from this performance gain. If we programmed to an interface, we just need to change one single line, the variable initialization. Now the list is initialized with a super fast list. Since we use the interface type list throughout the code and not the class specific type like array list, no further changes are needed. One last thing to point out. There are times when we don't want to program to an interface. That's when we need class-specific functionality or information. For example, when you want to use a specific method of class superfast list that is not part of the list interface and would not be accessible otherwise.